Hello my dear friends! In today's step-by-step -step video tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to paint this night camping landscape using Procreate. As always, I'm going to share some helpful Procreate tricks along the way. Before we begin, you can download all tutorial files free of charge by the link below this video. And now, if you are ready, let's grab our pencils and get started. We will need a new blank canvas for our illustration. Let's go ahead and create one. For that, let's click on this plus button in the corner and then you will see a list of canvases that you already used before. We can see the dimensions and also color profile. What we need is 2000 by 2500 pixels. Display P3 color profile. If you can't see it in the list, just click on this icon on the right and then enter 2000 and 2500. Make sure it is in pixels. DPI is set at 300. And if you go to color profile, you can also pick display P3 from RGB. Create. This time we are gonna use mostly standard Procreate brushes. And I added a couple more in the tutorial bundle. You can get them free of charge along with the color palette by the link in the video description. If you enjoy my free brushes and these YouTube video tutorials but still want to get more, please consider joining my creative community on Patreon, where I've already shared hundreds of premium quality brushes and advanced Procreate tutorials in many different styles. I'll be more than happy to assist you in this creative art journey. Now, without further ado, let's get straight into work. Before we start drawing, let's change the background color into a dark one. It'll be late evening in our drawing. For that we just need to tap on the background color and then select color number 1 from the palette. We will get this nice violet color. After that, we can add some surfaces. Let's start with this one on the front. It'll have number 14, so let's select it. And to draw it, we can pick technical pen from inking. Set the size to around 7%. And just draw a curve at the lower side. Later we will draw a tent here on the foreground. I will start from the left side. Make it go up a little in the center. And then to the right. Make sure it goes a little bit outside the canvas. Like this. And after that, we can just drag the color under the line. To fill the space. If you slide the pencil to the sides, we can adjust color draw threshold. Ok, let's stay on the same layer, but change the color into number 10. So we can add a few islands somewhere here, because we will have a lake and then another surface on the background. So let's first determine the horizon. We can divide the canvas into two equal parts and just draw another horizontal curve that will go from left to right. Let me increase the brush size a little bit, it can be around 16%, so you just see the lines better. Let's go to the right side like this, then draw another curve a little lower and go backwards. So we can add the first island here. Let's make it curvy, then it'll go down, like this. Now we can add one more, just draw with the same color. Make it go down and add a couple more curves at the lower side. Finally, we can just draw one more on the right. It can start approximately from the center and go up as an arc. Let's also make it curvy at the lower edge. It can have curves like this. Let's also make sure that it crosses the canvas. I will continue all these lines. Like this. 
all right. We also need to make sure that all lines are connected properly. And now we can start filling them. I will drag the color into one of the shapes. Let's say this one. Then just click continue filling. And tap in the rest. This is done. All we need to do is fill this empty area between the islands. It will be our water. Let's select color number 7 for it. Then add a layer underneath. So I'm clicking on the plus and then dragging it down. To make it faster, let's use selection. It can be set to freehand. We just need to outline it between the colors, like this. Then close the selection and tap on color fill. You will get this nice result. So let's go ahead and deselect. In the next step, we will start working on the background, paint some mountains and far away trees together with clouds. So let's add another layer that can be located above this one, but behind the layer with the grass. Let's select color number 4 first. The size can be at around 13%. And we need to draw a triangle, a little moved from the center to the right. I will start from the bottom and go up like this. Then it needs to go down. Let's make it a little bit curvy. Like this. Then we need to connect it at the lower side. Actually, I will just draw a line here. Then match it with this point. Now we need to drag the color into it, like this. Then we can add another layer under this one to draw another mountain behind the previous one. It can go up from the edge of the canvas. And then down again. Let's also close it. Here on top. And then fill it as well. Now that we have these two mountain shapes, we can start adding the details. So let's go to the previous layer. It was number three. We need to add another one above it and clip. First we can draw the snowy peak using light color number 5. I will remove this mountain for now so we can see the edge. This way it will be just easy. Let's start drawing from this side. Make a small curve, then continue going up towards the peak. Here we can add a short line, then a couple more triangles. Let's go a little more up and then change the direction. Just draw a few more triangles. They can go in different ways and end up like this. So after we did it, we also need to close it outside to be able to fill the shape. In the end we will get something like this. Now let's switch to the next color number 6. We can stay on the same layer or try to create another one underneath. It will be clipped right away. Let's draw some shape starting from here. Also close it. And then fill. After that we can draw another triangle here at the bottom. Let's also close this one. Then drag the color into it. And on the right side we can add a few more shapes. Going randomly up. Let's also connect this one. 
and fill it as well. Now after we did this part, I will just select these layers and use liquify to adjust the shape. I want to push it a little bit. Okay, so it is more soft on the right. Alright, now let's add a shadow on the right side. We can already merge these three layers, then add another one above, also clip it and set it to soft light mode. Then I will select black color from the color disk just by double tapping here at the bottom. Now let's start drawing from the peak of the mountain and try to match it with the peak of the small triangle. It can be an arc or a line. From here we can draw another one. That will go like this. Then we need to close it on the right side and drag the color into it. But it looks way too dark. To adjust it, we can just lower the opacity of this layer to 50%. And we will get this nice result. Well, the first mountain is ready. Let's merge these two layers and go to the next one that is located behind. We can shade it in a more simple way. Another way to do it is to use selection. Let's try it out. We just need to alpha lock the layer first. Then I will grab this light color number 5. Tap on selection icon. Switch to freehand and also activate color fill. So we can start adding a highlight here on top. And just draw a couple of triangles and at some point change the direction too. So it'll go to the right. Then we need to close the selection like this. And when we tap on the starting point, it'll get filled. All we need to do is add the same shadow. So I'm creating a new layer, clipping it, setting it to soft light, and we can also lower the opacity to 50% right away, because we already know this value. I will grab black color and just draw an arc starting from the peak. Then go down. We can try to match it with this point. Then we also need to close it on the right and fill. Alright, both mountains are ready. We can start working on the background. So let's merge these two layers and also these two mountains. Then we need to create a layer under all layers. Place it right above the background color. Now let's go to the color palette and pick color number 2. Then go to selection and to add a gradient, let's do it this way. Switch to rectangle, color fill is still turned on and we need to outline a rectangular shape that will go a little bit above the mountain. Like this. Now let's deselect it, switch to the next color number 3, then go back to selection and outline another rectangle that will go a little bit lower. Let's say until here. After we did this, we just need to apply Gaussian Blur. Let's select it from Adjustments and slide to the right to remove all the sharp borders until we get this nice gradient. We can keep it at 35%. And if you'd like to move it up or down, you can go to Transformation menu, switch to Freeform and try to drag it like this. So it'll get lighter or darker. I think I will drag it a little down and now I like it. We can start drawing the clouds. For that we need to create a layer above this one. And we can start with color number 24. We can draw two bigger shapes on the sides from these mountains. I will draw two arcs, then close it and after that fill. 
We can do the same on the left. But it can look a little bit different. Let's also fill this one. And after that, we can create a layer underneath. Let's now try to select color number 3 and draw another cloud shape above this one. It can have smaller curves. And also go down like this. Let's fill it. And then I will add another small one above this one on the right. Let's just draw a horizontal line. Then two smaller shapes on the sides. And a big arc in the middle. Let's also fill this one. Alright. We can now change the color into number 30. Draw another small shape between the mountain and this cloud. Let's also keep it simple, like a cartoon style. This way I will do a big arc and then a small shape to connect it. We also need to fill it. I will adjust it at the lower side. And after that, with the same color I will draw another one right above the peak. Let's also make a horizontal line first. Then two small shapes. A big one in the middle. And two more on the sides. So the clouds will look a little bit different. Now let's also fill it. And draw one more. I will place it here on the right. Let me start somewhere here. I will also make a horizontal line. Like this. Then this tiny cute shape. And a couple of big arcs. Now we can also fill it. Then select color 25. And add something here. Very high. I just want to make it look nice. Okay. Finally, we can select color 26. Add a layer above this one. Later we will merge them. Now I just want to add some lighter clouds. Let's place this one here on the right. We can match it with this cloud at the bottom. And then start drawing smaller shapes. Here I will add a bigger arc. And one more going to the side of the canvas. Now we can drag the color into it. And draw another big one here. It can intersect with this violet cloud. I will start from the side and continue making arcs just this way. Now we can just make a horizontal line and if you wait a second and tap on the canvas, it will go horizontally. Now I will fill this one and the clouds are ready. Let's draw a cute tiny crescent somewhere in this empty space. We can select color 16 for it. We can merge all the layers for the clouds and then add another one that we will also merge later. There is a very easy way to draw a crescent by using selection. Let's open this menu and switch to ellipse. Now we need to draw a circle somewhere here. Make it not very big. Approximately like this. After that, let's switch from Add to Remove and try to draw a smaller circle that will intersect the first one. Let's go more inside it. And once we finish the selection, it will be removed. We have the perfect crescent shape that you can now rotate if needed and also move. Let me place it a little bit more on the left. 
I will also rotate it a little bit counterclockwise. And now it is fine. Let's add some stars. And to do that, we can go to calligraphy and select monoline brush because it has a perfect circle shape. First we can set the size to around 33% and tap a couple times. As you see we are getting these nice circles. Now let's lower the brush size to around 19% and tap a couple more times for smaller stars. Now we can lower it, let's say to 7% and tap again. But don't do it inside the crescent. Just outside. Let me tap one more time. And now it is done. We got this nice background. And after that, we can add the faraway trees. Let's merge this to layers. And after that, go to create the layer above the mountains. In the camping landscape brush set, there is a pine forest brush. It is from my watercolor landscape set. Let's select it. And first try to use some bluish tone. Let's say this one, number 21. Or maybe we can go a little bit darker. With color 18. Also, not to go a little bit down, we can use selection. I will switch to freehand, but remove color fill. We just need to draw a line here on the green part. And then just go up. Let's tap to finish the selection. And then on the brush to activate it. We need to select the size. Here the trees can be a little bit bigger. So let's try around 9% and just start making horizontal strokes. This brush has a little color dynamics. We can move the pencil up and down. Just do it until you like the result. Ok. Now we can adjust the color. You can make it darker or lighter. And also adjust saturation. If you like, you can also change the hue. I will set hue to 49%, saturation to 48%, and brightness to 51%. So we will get this. Let's keep the selection active, but now select some green tone. Let's try color number 11. We can add another layer and draw another row of trees that will go a little bit lower. We can try to lower the brush size to 7 or 8 percent and make these horizontal strokes here too. Just like this. Now we can go a little bit lighter or just change the tone a little with color 12 and make a couple more strokes. After that I will create a layer between these two to add a darker shade for the trees. So we can actually grab the darker stone from here. Maybe make it darker on the color disk in just a tiny bit. And add the trees between these two rows. This way it will look nice. When it is ready, we can deselect this part. And then merge all three layers for the trees, since they are ready. In the next step, we can add some bigger trees on these islands and also make them very simple. So let's create a layer above layer 1. And then in the color palette, we can select color number 13, which is very dark green. Let's draw the first tree here on the right. It will just have 
triangles. This size here can be set to 7%. We can first draw them on the left side. Then go down. And after that, finish it on the right. It doesn't have to be symmetrical. Let's just make sure it matches with the side of the canvas. And also all lines are closed. So we can fill it. Let's try it now. And we got the first shape. If you'd like to fix it, you can use a razor. For example, I will make it more curvy here. By the way, eraser is also set to technical pen. Okay, now it is better. After that, I will switch back to brush and draw another tree on the left that can look a little bit different. This time I will start from here. And then finish it on the right. They can go a little bit lower. In the end I will draw two bigger shapes and connect them at the bottom, just like this. Let me also match the lines here on top. And now let's drag the curl here too. I will make a couple adjustments. Okay. Maybe this one can be a little bit bigger. Just make sure it looks nice. I like this shape now. I will just Remove it from here. And after that, we can draw the trunks. So let's add a layer underneath. And first select color 27. First we can draw it for this one. Let's make an arc on the left side. And then another one here on the right. It can go a little bit more straight. Now let's add some curves here at the bottom. And also connect it on top. After that we can drag the color here. Ok. Now let's draw for this one. And we can make it longer. So it stands on the ground. Let's make an arc here on the right and then add a few curves here too. In the end we need to close the shape on top and drag the color into it. Also if you'd like to fix it, you can use liquify in push. I will make it a little bit thinner. Like this. Okay, now let's proceed to shading and start with the trees. So we need to go back to layer number 7, then I will add another one above it and clip. I also want to add some noise texture here. So if you go to material set from Procreate, 
we can pick noise brush. Then I will set it to maximum size and pick color number 9. But I think we can make it even darker. So let me open the color disk and just move this picker a little bit diagonally until we get this dark blue color. Now let's apply it at the bottom of the trees and just go a little up. When going up, I will lower the pressure that I apply the pencil, so it'll get a little bit lighter. Let's also do the same on this one and just go up and keep it green on top. Okay. In the end, we can add another layer, also clip it, so we can put a highlight here. For that we need to select some very light green color. We have this one number 10, but we can make it lighter if we go to the color disk. So I will move it up a little and also to the left. Here we also need to change the brush. We can either use technical pen or try to select gouache grunge paint. Just make the size smaller and I will also set it to maximum opacity. Let me try it. I think it can be set around 3 or 4% and I will just draw these lines on the edge, on the left side. This way. Then on the next one, if you like, you can make the size even smaller. Then also here and all other triangles that go down. I think we can draw the last one here and keep this dark. Now let's do the same on this tree. Let's highlight the last shape. Now when the trees are ready, let's go to the trunks. Here we can just alpha lock the layer. Now let's grab color 28 from the palette. Keep using gouache grungy paint at this small size and just draw some lines here at the bottom. Let's make this one a little bit longer. Like this. Now let's also draw on the right. Then go up. I'm just paint it this way. And also add a shadow under this triangle. Now let's also draw on this one. Here I will increase the size and just paint it on the left. Like this. Now let's apply very low pressure. To darken it like this, so it'll also get some texture. Then with a small size, we can draw these lines at the bottom. I will draw another one here. Then on the color disk. I will make it a little bit darker by moving it diagonally, just a tiny bit. I want to darken it more here on the right. And on the left side, we need to add a highlight. So let's try to select some yellowish tone. We have this one, number 16. 
and then I will make it very light by moving the picker to the left. So let's draw on the side of the trunk and then also on this one. We can make it a little bit wider. These are ready. We have them on one layer. Now instead of drawing more trees, let's do this. We can merge the layers but without the trunks. Then go to selection and I want to outline this tree on the left. Using it in freehand but without color fill. Let's tap to close the selection and then in this menu click copy and paste. It will appear on a new layer. Let's drag it down and place it under the trunks. After that we can go to transformation menu, move it to the right side, then I will flip it horizontal and transform it in free form. I want to make it smaller, so I will push it down and also to the side. Let's place it somewhere here, so we have some space for the trunk. Also we can recolor it quickly. We just need to select color number 12 and drag it here on top, where we don't have the noise. Also you can adjust color drop threshold. The noise texture will also get dark, but I'd like to make it even darker. We can do it if we use curves. So let's select it from adjustments. And I will drag this slider to the left side and this one to the right. Just a little bit. We will get this nice result. We can deselect it. Then go back to this layer number 7, where we can outline the tree on the right to copy it. Let's copy and paste it first. We can keep it here on top, also flip it horizontal and move it to the left. Let's place it on this small island here. We can also adjust the size a little. I will push it up so we can draw a trunk that will be standing on this island and also a little bit to the left. So it will look like this. Now we can also recolor it quickly. We already have this color selected. We just need to drag it here on top. And then also adjust curves. Exactly in the same way. So I will push this one a little to the left. And the other one to the right. All we have to do now is draw trunks. Let's make it a little bit different. So I will grab the darkest color from here. From the right side. Then I will add another layer under this tree. Switch to technical pen and just draw some interesting shape. Let's make it curvy like this. Try to match it with the side of this island. Then it'll go down here with some more shapes. We also need to close it here on top and then fill. After that we can grab some light color, let's say this one number 17 and just add a highlight inside it. It can go like this. We can paint it manually. And now it looks different from these trunks. We just need to add a highlight on the left. So I will pick the color from this one and draw a line. Ok. Let's also draw a trunk for this tree. So we can merge these two layers and after that create a layer under the layer on top. 
Let's also try to make it a little bit different. So I will grab color 27 and just draw a curve here and then go to the left. We also need to close it on top and then fill. After that I will alpha lock the layer and paint it into green at the bottom. So we can actually try to use this color number 13. We just need to switch to gouache grungy paint. I will make the size a little bigger and paint at the bottom horizontally. Lower the pressure while going up. Like this. Maybe we can just add a highlight here too. So let me select this color and draw a line. Now it is done. And the trees actually look different from each other. We can merge all the layers for the trees and start working on these green parts. So let's go to the first layer. We can actually try to apply alpha lock on it. And select color number 11. Let's pick gouache grungy paint. Increase the size to around 30%. And first add the shadow here. On the right side. I'm applying very low pressure on the pencil to keep this grainy texture. We can increase the size slightly and press more on the right to make it darker. Like this. Now let's also apply shadow on this side. Go a little to the right and make it dark more on the left and also at the bottom. We can also darken this part behind the trees and on this one too. It'll go like this. Let's make it a little darker at the lower side and after we apply the shadows, let's add the highlights. For that I will select this very light green from the tree. Make the size smaller and just draw a line here on top. Let it go to the right. Like this. We can also apply it here on top of the shape. And go all the way to the right. And just like this. Now let's draw on this one along the edge and also inside on the small part. After that we can select color 27, add another layer above and then clip it. Let's go back to technical pen and add some thickness to the banks. So we can draw a line this way, then connect it to the small part and if you make the size bigger, we can paint it manually like this. Let's also continue it here on the right. And then also draw here. We can just create some curves. Let's also outline it around the shape and then drag the color into it. Now we can also add some thickness on this side. Also make some curves. Little go up and down. We need to close it 
and then drag the color, like this. Finally, let's apply the shadows here. So we can draw it this way. Try not to damage the highlight that we already created. And after that, draw at the bottom as well. It can look like this. Now we can go with the darker color. It was number 28. And just darken it a little lower. This way. Let's also do it here. And then here too. Just like this. We can keep this thin part as it is. And once we got the shapes, let's smudge them a little. So I will switch to gouache grungy paint. Lower the size. And just start working carefully on the upper side. Make strokes inwards. You can make the size a bit smaller. Go back and forth. Like this. And also smudge the dark color that we have at the bottom. Let's continue doing this. We can change the direction at some parts. All right. Now let's also do it on this one. I will stretch it to this side. Changing the brush size from time to time. Here we can also change the direction and go in the opposite way. Like this. Then to the right side. And just make a few more smudge and strokes. Also smudge the dark color. Let me have a look at it. And I think it turned out quite nice. We just need to finish this one on the left. And now I like how it looks. We can just add some more highlights. Let me grab this light color again. I will lower the brush size. Let's switch to gouache grungy paint and just draw a highlight under this tree. And just a little bit. We can also do it on this one. And a little bit here. Okay. This is done. We can start working on the water. So let's merge these layers, go to the layer number 2, and I think I will create another one above it, and then clip. First we can add some texture on the water. Let's start with color number 8. We also need to use gouache grungy paint, make the size bigger, and start making subtle strokes on the sides. We can make it even bigger. And just paint it like this on the left side first. Keep it light in the middle. We also need to apply it here in the small gap. And then here on the right. Let's press a little bit more. Especially on the sides. 
also here under this shape then on this one and after that we can add shadows that come from the trees using color number nine so let's start from here we can darken it slightly like this I'm also not pressing too much on the pencil and here we can just draw sort of triangle that will go down let's make a few horizontal strokes this way and with a smaller size we can also go around this island let's also paint under this one a little bit here now we can also paint sort of a triangle for the shadow that comes from the tree and just like this let's continue from here I just increased the size let's paint a few times and after that we can do this let's click on the finger we can set it to the same brush that we have and then we can just make strokes like this on the edges let's also do it here going left and right Okay, after that we can add some light reflections. So I will create another layer above this one. We can also try to clip it. Then I will set it to soft light and use white color that we can select from the disk. Now let's make the size very small and start drawing horizontal lines. Maybe not so small. can draw under this shape then around this one make some curves for the waves then a couple horizontal lines also here in the middle and then on the left Let's also make some circles here. And then go horizontally. And just a few lines to show the water texture. Like this. Maybe we can try to duplicate this layer with the colors to make it a little bit darker and textured. Now it looks even better. We can merge all the layers for the water and finally start working on the foreground to draw the tent and the fire. For that we need to create a layer above our layers first. Let's just select color number 15 and also technical pen. We can pick it from recent. Now if we tap and hold here on the end icon, we can get all other layers removed. Just to see this yellow color. We can also keep this one, but lower its opacity, so we can see where to place the tent. It will be better this way. For the frontal part, we can just draw sort of a triangle, starting with the first line, that will go down, and then also draw on the right. Let's make this one a little bit longer, so the tent will have a perspective. 
After that we just need to connect these two lines with another one at the bottom. Now let's draw an arc this way. Let it go to the right side. Then move it down like this. We can also add a small detail here. And at the end connect these lines too. Just make sure it stands on the ground, not hanging in the air. I will make sure to close all the gaps before filling the shapes. We can drag the color into this one. Now here on the front, let's add a couple more details. For the door, we can draw an arc like this. I will match it with a line. And then draw one more on the right. After that we can fill it here on top. Right after that, we can draw another shape like this. Make it rounded at the bottom. And fill the remaining part. Now the door is ready. We can create a layer underneath. Pick color number 18 from the palette. I will also remove this layer, so you can see the lines better. We also need to connect these two. Let me zoom in. It can go like an arc. It'll be just the base for the tent. It will be darker. Now to fill the shapes, we also need to close the invisible part of it. That goes under the yellow color and drag the color into it. Alright, now this shape is ready. We can switch to another color. It'll be number 20. Starting from this corner, we can draw a line. Inside the tent. Then we just need to connect it and fill. Let's go back to color 18. So we can draw this inner part. It'll have two colors. At the bottom it can have this one. Let's also fill it. And then here on top we can pick color 21. Just like this. Let's also fill it. And now the inner part is done. We can just alpha lock the layer. Select color number 19. Outline it this way. On the right side, using freehand selection. And then just click color fill. To darken it here. In the end I will tap and hold on the layer to bring it back. And also set the opacity of this one to 100%, so we can continue drawing. Let's use color 20. We can stay on the same layer and just add this grungy texture. At the bottom is a thin line. We can do the same with the same color here. Just apply lower pressure to make it lighter. Now let's grab this yellow color. Also go back to this layer on top. Alpha lock it. So we can paint on the tent. Just add some final touches on it. So we can outline it here. You determine the entrance. Like this. It can go a little upper with the short line. And then to the left. 
Let's now close the shape. And we can actually paint it manually like this. With a brush. It looks better. We can switch to color 17, which comes next. And add a shadow here. Under the light yellow color. Just like this. It is getting some volume, which looks nice. Now we can draw a shadow on the right. Just as a line. If you make it a little bit curvy, it'll be even better. Let's switch to the light color again. And just draw a line here. Then make it go down to the corner. All we need to do is just paint under the line, like this. So the tent doesn't look flat, with all these details. We can also draw a highlight here, as an arc. And then also paint it. This is also done. We can switch to color 17, that is dark. First apply it here on the edge. And after that, draw with white here on top. It will also work as a highlight. Maybe another short line. And do the same on the left, but make it thinner. Let's continue this line all the way down. Let's see what we can do here. I will just grab this dark color, switch to technical pen, so we can outline the door like this. Let's also separate these two parts from each other, the same way. I already like how it turned out, but we can add a little more details. I will create another layer on top. Pick color 20 and make it just a little bit darker by moving the picker down and to the right. We can keep using technical pen and just draw these ropes. Let's draw two short lines first. And from here it'll go as an arc. Then another one. We can add one more. Then from here. And then draw these wooden sticks that go into the ground. Connected with the ropes. I think we can see it this way here on the left. And now the tent is ready. Here on the left we can draw the fire. So let's merge all the lace for the tent. And create another one above it. We can start with white color to draw the hottest flame. I will use technical pen, just set the size to around 5% and draw a shape of a water droplet. We can fill it and then add a layer underneath. Now we can select this color from the tent 
and draw another shape around that'll go up. Let's also fill it and then add the last layer under the previous one. We can also pick the color from the tent and draw two more shapes on the sides. The first one and then one more. Now let's fill them both and add a couple more smaller shapes somewhere here. This one will be with the same color and for the other one I will pick this yellow. Okay, now we got the fire shape. And we can smudge it a little. So let's go to the first layer, click on the finger and smudge it a little bit on the sides. Make it go up like this. Now let's do the same with the next layer. Just work a little bit on the edges. especially here. Now we have this one. Let's also do it quickly. And it will be enough. Now let's add some rocks around. These layers can be merged already. And then I will add another layer underneath. We can start with color number 22. They will go around the fire, so it doesn't spread outside. For the safety. Let's go up on the right side. I will add one more. And then continue from the left. Let's go up a little with more shapes. The last one. And once we have the outlines, we can fill them one by one. So I will drag the color into one of the shapes, then click continue filling, and after that just step inside. Now they are ready. I will just fix some of them, also move it a little bit to center. Alright, now let's add alpha lock to the layer, select color 23 and add highlights on top. We can paint approximately more than half of each rock. Let's also do it on this one. Since the shapes are small, we can do it manually, just using the pencil. Let's paint on this one. And then go to the opposite side, like this. They can also have curvy shapes, like these two. And we have the biggest one here. Let's also paint it. Now it is ready as well. After that we can create a layer underneath. Pick this dark color number 20. And using selection, just outline this area under the fire and it will be filled. 
Let me go to this layer where we have the green part. I will remove color fill. Outline it at the bottom. Then select this gouache brush and color 29. So we can draw some shadows. Let's first do it under the tent. Go to the right side. Now also under the rocks. This way. And then with the bigger size, we can darken it more. Just go around the shape. Let's do it on the sides first. Also a little bit at the bottom. On the right side. Like this. A few more strokes here. I'm not pressing on the pencil to make it slightly textured. This is now ready. Let me just select this light color. So we can draw a highlight here on top. It's a thin line. Let's make it a little bit wider. Draw it with low pressure. Now we can remove selection. Now the drawing is almost ready. We can just add some final touches to it. So let's go to the layer that is on top. Then to Actions, Add, Copy Canvas and Paste it. I want to add some noise texture to it. So let's go back to Adjustments and select Noise. I like this one called Ridges. So let's select it and just move it to the right. We can set it to around 13%. Like this. But now it looks too sharp. If we go back to the layer and set it to soft light, it'll get much softer. Like this. But now it looks a little bit dark. So let's just lower the opacity a little bit. We can keep it at around 73%. There is still some noise, but it's not so hard. As the final touch, let's add smoke on the fire. We need to create another layer for it. Then go to materials and pick noise. It is set to maximum size and opacity. Now let's go to selection, pick freehand and just outline the shape. It'll start from here and go as a curve up. Let's go around the canvas now and from here inside again. With just more curves. In the end we need to connect it here. Then tap on the brush to activate it and select white from the disk. So we can just paint inside the selection, this way. Let's deselect it now and in the end we can also set it to soft light to make it slightly visible. If you think it is not enough, you can duplicate the layer but then lower the opacity of one of the layers until it looks nice. I think we can keep this one at 30%. So after this final step, our camping illustration is complete. If you enjoyed following this tutorial, I will appreciate it if you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more Procreate related content. If you share your finished drawing on Instagram, please don't forget to tag me at Tettyworks so I can see it. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you in the next video.